Coming up next on Public Access TV is Fan to Fan, a sports interview show. In this episode, we take a look at the 2023 Worcester Red Sox, better known as the Woo Sox, with one of its vice presidents, Joe Bradley. We're joined today by a special Framingham fan, Mayor Charlie Sasitsky. Stay tuned. This will hit hard and it's going to fly by. Welcome to Fan to Fan. I'm your host, Dave Hornfisher. Today we talk Woo Sox baseball all the way from Worcester with my special guest, Joe Bradley, Woo Sox Vice President for Player and Community Relations, as well as Framingham fan, Mayor Charlie Sasitsky. Charlie, Joe, welcome. Thank Joe, you. Joe, welcome back. Uh, you're, nice you've, become be a, you, you've become a real fan and uh, I mean a real regular on my show now. This is about three or four years, I guess, we've done this. My first time with the mayor. I guess I have to, uh, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Charlie, Mr. Whatever is, works for you is works for me. That's well, you've fine. always been Charlie, so okay, uh, I, I'm, I'm with that. And, but uh, Joe, uh, well, since the focus of this show is sort of on the Woo Sox, why don't you tell us what's new for 2023? Yeah, well, thanks, Dave. First off, thanks for having me on. It's always a pleasure to be here. Uh, we're coming off a season in 2022 where we led all of minor league baseball, 120 clubs in, in paid attendance. The community <clears throat> has just been uh, outstanding. Uh, we've had a great uh, first couple of weeks here at Polar Park. We had a really nice opening day and a great second sort of first uh, full home stand where people came out. We had uh, great crowds all weekend last last weekend. The weather the uh, entry to the park. Was, was just gorgeous. <clears throat> and, um, you know, I think fans Coming out this season, they're starting to see some some nice new amenities. We added a cool new fan deck uh, out in left field. Um, we we added some uh, great space heaters on the on the concourse for some of our colder April nights. Although last week the weather was was so nice, we ended up not uh, not utilizing those uh, too much. Mm -hmm. But you know, I think when you come to Polar Park, there's always always something new and cool and different to see. One of the great things that that, that I've observed from a from a little distance anyway, is just the way you really brought the community into this. And, and we're going to get into this with, with our mayor here today. But why don't you just give me a little bit of the context for the community events that you that, that, that you do. It seems like there's a lot of that happening. Yeah. Well, you know, one of the reasons why we're here, too, and one of the things that we <laughs> unveiled last year was we call it our town takeover program, where we, uh, we really try and gauge some of the uh, surrounding towns in communities. And uh, working with, with Framingham and Mayor Charlie Sasitsky and doing a Framingham night was really just a no-brainer for us. Last year, uh, Mayor came out on, on Easter Sunday, and this year we wanted to make sure that we picked a night where we knew we could get uh, Framingham <laughs> legend Lou Merloni and, um, and work with the Metro West YMCA, who's, who's mm -hmm. coming out too. So we're really excited about next week and can't wait. So, uh, Charlie, what does what does the mayor have to do in terms of putting a Framingham day together at Worcester? I think it's a great opportunity to showcase the city. <laughs> First of all, we're very pleased that uh, they've thought of us to include us in their marketing area, and uh, we've taken advantage of it to the best we can. Uh, we've got everybody all excited about going out there. Uh, they're very enthusiastic about uh, going to uh, Polar Park and seeing the, the Woo Sox play. And one of the things I appreciated when I went out there uh, last year to throw out the first pitch was the uh, ability to speak to the on-the-air announcers uh, between innings and talk about Framingham and real, give a real good plug for Framingham. And I like to take advantage of that opportunity whenever I can. And so that was very nice. And we had a good turnout from Framingham. Uh, uh, one of my uh, employees in the office sang the national anthem, which was really amazing. She's going to do it again this year, I understand, and uh, we're looking forward to it. And that's going to be on April 27th. Yes. Which, what day of the week is that? Is that Thursday night. It's a Thursday night, and the game starts at... Uh, 6.45 6, 6 p.m. 6.45 p.m. Is that yeah. that's a typical weeknight start? 
the Wu Sox. Yeah, typical yeah. typical weeknights mm -hmm. uh, start for us. Mayor, we'll certainly get you back in the Nesson booth uh, <laughs> with our broadcasters. Right. I know they had a great time. Will that be on television? Is with that one mayor? of the, you? You televise a lot of them, I know, on Nesson. That's right. So all of our Wu Sox home games are either on Nesson or Nesson Plus. Oh, okay. So when we're playing at the same time as the Red Sox, right. we get bumped to. Nesson Plus, right. which is sort of like their version of an ESPN2. Sure. Um, yeah. And it, it, it's still, you know, when we were in Pawtucket, Rhode Island, Nesson would maybe only cover five or right, six right. of our home games a year. Yeah. And uh, so the fact that they're uh, covering close to 75 for us here in <laughs> Worcester is is really just great. Um, and it's a great opportunity for for the for the mayor too to speak to uh, you know the fans who are tuning in. Uh, so so, so the Framingham night is 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 has a nice connection with the YMCA. I understand. This year, this yes, year. that's right. And and the and is there is there a share of the ticket proceeds that's going to go back to the Framingham yeah, community in some way? Exactly right, Dave. So that link that you just put up on the screen <clears> there, um, fans who who purchase tickets through that link, a portion of those proceeds are going to go right back. Uh, to the Metro West YMCA. Mm -hmm. So Rick McPherson, their their CEO, he'll be out with with their great team. Um, we'll be recognizing them during the pregame ceremony, bringing out some of their kids. And so mm -hmm. uh, we're really looking forward that, to to having them, and we're glad that they're a part of the the Framingham Night mm -hmm. festivities this year. So so I guess when it came time to get a pitcher, you felt most comfortably getting the mayor to to to, to do the pitch, right? Is that the idea? I mean, hey, uh, ha having the mayor and <laughs> and Framingham Lou Marloni out to, yeah. to toss out a first pitch is is guess, gonna be great. Guess you can't beat that, right? <laughs> is this gonna be a double play combination there out at second go. base? Uh, yeah. Gonna well, have uh, the Y guy sliding in maybe? Or, uh, yeah, uh, we'll, we'll see how Dr. Charles uh, orchestrates it. But Mayor, would you like to throw out at the same time as Lou? How, how, would, how would you feel about that? I am totally open to anything. Okay. As long as yeah. I don't bounce it more than once on the way to the plate, I'll be happy. Yeah. Yeah, we yeah, we yeah, always well, tell you, people, aim yeah. high, Dave. Yeah, well, yeah, when you high. mentioned the doctor being there, I thought maybe Dr. Charles is gonna, is gonna take care of the mayor's uh, his uh, his rotator cuff after he throws the <laughs> he have, He's a dentist though, so he's I don't a, know. I, know. <laughs> I don't know how well he'd do on my shoulder. <laughs> oh, so Charlie, uh, you're you're a baseball fan, a Red Sox fan. I hope I don't see any Red Sox on no, you. No, I don't I'm have sorry. mine on either. But I, I'm not a diehard fan like that. Uh, I don't bleed Red Sox red or anything. But you know, I'm I'm a a, a good fan. We enjoy watching the games mainly at home on TV. Yeah. Once in a while, we'll try to get into uh, one of the games. But mm -hmm. I think the opportunity to now go to Worcester and watch the Wo Sox play in Worcester uh, is a great alternative. They're going into Boston. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's less expensive to go to Worcester. And you see some of the same players that you might see in Fenway Park on any given night. We talked about that, uh, uh, who you may see. and. And I think it's terrific to uh, have that connection. Yeah, we'll get to that a little bit later in the show. Let's talk a little bit about the park itself, uh, uh, Joe. We've got a couple of photographs coming up here of the, uh, I think the third, first one kind of relates to, the, to the, some of the food concessions that you have here around the park. Uh, you have some new kind of food happening this year. Uh, there's a uh, good looking young guy who, has, who happens to be David Hornfisher from Texas who came up to my, my, my grandson. Uh, who was imbibing out by your the BT's smokehouse? That that's uh, great. I'm glad he got to enjoy some BT's barbecue. That's definitely one of our most popular stands. We we have at least uh, eight or so different restaurants that have a physical presence uh, in Polar Park. Um, in my one of my favorite areas uh, that we brought out last year was an area called a, a Taste of Worcester, and what we do there is we try and use that as an area where each homestand we can rotate a different mm -hmm. restaurant yeah. um, to have a presence in the park because one thing we found was that um, so many local restaurants express interest sure. in uh, having a presence in the park and so we created a space called uh, a taste of Worcester where uh, each week we have a new restaurant who comes out and uh, <clears throat> gets to sell their food at the park and it's it's been fun for our fans it's been uh, fun for a lot of these restaurants that get to come out on a weekly mm -hmm. basis and, and sell their products and uh, inter interact with with some Woosacks fans who are on hand. So mm -hmm. uh, that's definitely been a, a great great part of the park and something that we're going to continue to build off of. One of the things that I've enjoyed the, the number of times I've been to the park is just going to different parts of the park to watch the game. And, and that seems to be encouraged even. I mean, we have a photo coming up here of a 
of a couple of the outfield views even. And, uh, you know, I think uh, when, when the park was built, I recall you, you, you saying that people didn't want to just go in a park and sit there with a scorecard like I used to for nine innings and sit and m meticulously record every pitch, right? And so here's yeah. a view of wh where, 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 where are these people sitting? Yeah, so th those fans there are atop our Worcester wall. Our Worcester wall is in right field. Uh, it's not in left field. It's not quite as big as a, as a green monster either, uh, but you know, that seating bowl that you see, uh, Dave, and you just sort of alluded to this, our, our seating bowl sits about 6,000 fans. Uh, and that was a lot smaller than where we were coming from at McCoy Stadium with a, with a seating bowl that uh, sat closer to, to 10,000. Um, but the, the capacity of Polar Park uh, and McCoy Stadium are, are actually relatively similar. We, you know, 9,508, uh, you know, we can get a little bit closer to to 10,000 but mm -hmm. we we put a um, smaller seating bowl in and Larry and, and Charles and Janet Marie did that because they wanted to create more fun neighborhoods. I think we have a view of the left field uh, view of, too. Of the park. Park. Yeah mm -hmm. um, yeah that's that's the left field area there that's atop our Hanover deck uh, but that's an example of a another great group area that's about a 150 person space mm -hmm. Um, and a, a, a fun place to, to catch a game. So we, we created more sort of unique neighborhoods in, mm -hmm. in Polar Park. Uh, all the suites are great, but uh, we have so many different party terraces and cool vantage points to, to watch a game. We have a duck boat out in left center field uh, where you can watch, watch the game from up there. So we wanted to create a uh, atmosphere where, where fans could uh, watch and tune into the game from so many different vantage points. And you got so that's the a big great scoreboard, which is just fantastic. I love the lights on the scoreboard. And you got a re, uh, Amtrak train line running right along behind the scoreboard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 22 trains uh, come by every single day. So uh, you bet that, you know, when you're they go, catching, woo -woo. catching a woo woo. <laughs> the, well, the, the train conductor will toot the horn sometimes and get the crowd going, uh, which is uh, always fun. So Yeah, yeah. one of the, pic the picture there from left field was uh, e EMAS Senior Softball Night, and we're going to repeat that again this year. So We and love so, our friends at yeah, EMAS Senior yeah. Softball. <laughs> you love all your friends, Joe. You. <laughs> <laughs> Unless they're Yankee fans, right? That's right. Is there a Yankee fan rivalry in the, in the, uh, in, 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 this is the International League, right, it's called? Uh, not the International League anymore. Okay. Um, we're we're Triple A East now, uh, oh, okay. as they call it. But it's it's funny you you bring up the Yankees because Scranton's coming to town next okay. week for uh -huh. for Framingham night. We're going to be playing uh, the Yankees Triple A affiliate. So, oh, well, you got um, wear your Yankee hat that night, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> but we, uh, we 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 likely will see some Yankee uh, fans in in the crowd that night. Uh -huh. Any other couple of other highlight events you want to highlight for 2023? Do you, do you still do fireworks every Friday night? We still do fireworks every Friday night. Uh, Saturday nights are, are still really cool at the park because after the game ends, we uh, let fans come onto the uh, field and play catch. We call them sunset catches on the field. Uh, Sundays, we always uh, have kids and fans uh, run run the bases. Mm -hmm. they're, they're meant for kids, but of course you you see some adults that like to get out there too uh, after a few beverages and take laps around the field and and have a nice time. But get the it, team it's doctor of course out for, there again. Yeah. For kids, yeah, it's uh, it's it's certainly geared towards kids. But well, yeah, let's. Cool th this is about baseball, and let's talk a little bit about the players. Charlie mentioned the fact that you, you know uh, I was looking through your. I've got an image of your your program book up there on up, up on back of you, there on the on the on the case. And uh, I, was, I, I was amazed at how many of those players were in there actually were at Fenway last year. And I mean, this was the Worcester yearbook, and yet it just almost could, could, could have been the Fenway yearbook. I mean, uh, so let, let, let's look at a couple of the pictures that I, that I got here. Well, this was the, uh, the this, this kid I remember being great in spring training, wasn't he? Ryan Fitzgerald. Yeah. Uh, I bet not too many people in Framingham know about him yet. Yeah. Ryan, mm -hmm. Ryan Fitzgerald is certainly a fan favorite of ours. He's certainly a community leader of ours, too. Um, you know, out of all the players who we have on our roster, Ryan is is out there in the community, reading to kids, visiting hospitals, uh, doing things for veterans. Um, you know, he's he's a real community leader on this team, and we're we're fortunate 
to have him back uh, this season. So can't say enough good things about Fitzy. He even has his own merchandise line in our Wusax <laughs> team store. So He's sort of the know, Brock the, Holt of your team, isn't he? Yeah, he well, play that, all over the place. That's and, not a bad comparison, Dave. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, not a bad comparison. Yeah. Uh, and, Brock uh, Holt was the Jimmy Fun captain, and and uh, but yeah, we're we're lucky to have Fitzy back. For sure. and, and a lot of the other players do a lot of community stuff too. I would assume. Yeah, yeah. We, we had uh, David Hamilton, who's a, a shortstop of ours. He he read to uh, uh, a group of elementary school kids in in Webster last Friday, and you know he's I, dangerous I, though, isn't he? The guy that steals the bases. He's he's really fast. Yeah, he's <laughs> a he's a speed demon. <laughs> yeah. um, but, you know, I think we're all fortunate There's enough to... There's a speed demon here, too. Now, th- th- this guy kind of represents sort of what I would call last year's up-down guys. He, he was at Fenway. He'd be at Worcester. And you had a bunch of those. But uh, And now he's just, you know, this week he's back with the Red back Sox. Back in Fenway, again, so. yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Jaron Duran started the year with us. And that, that's part of the cool thing about coming to Wusax games. You never know who's going to be up in Boston next week. Jaron was with us to, to start the year. And here you see him on Marathon Monday yesterday hitting a double off the wall and, and having a nice game right. for the Red Sox. So um, we're, of course, excited to see guys like that go up to the Red Sox and, and, and do well. Dahlbeck, who seems to be up and back a lot. Dahlbeck, yeah, and, but, and you know, it's a it, it's a cool thing for our fans, too. Crawford was get, there for a minute, and then he was guys. back. And Crotter pit, <laughs> Cutter Crawford pitched great yesterday. Yeah, so yeah. Um, that that's part of the, the cool thing. And, and then, of course, there are, the, are the prospects. And the, I, I don't know all of them, but I, I picked this one out because uh, – First of all, I wouldn't want to stand at home plate with this. I'm a, I'm a big guy with this guy standing 60 feet away from me throwing it. I can. <laughs> <laughs> he's <laughs> he, he that's Brian Mata, uh, Dave. You mentioned it. he's he's one of our top pitching prospects. Uh, you know, throws in the high 90s. Uh, came off Tommy John surgery last year. We he came up to us in about August of or, or September of last year and mm-hmm. uh, had a great few starts with us and now he's back with us uh, coming off a nice spring training to to Mm -hmm. start the year and he's he's definitely going to be someone who our our fans are going to be able to enjoy but who who long who knows how long we'll have him you know if he keeps pitching well he could end up in up in boston soon but certainly one of our top pitching prospects any other players here that i didn't give a picture of What, what about connor wong connor wong yeah connor wong was was another guy who you know when the when the Red Sox signed uh, Alfaro from the San Diego Padres, uh, you know a lot of people thought that Alfaro was was going to make um, the major league roster. But uh, as Mayor just alluded to, you know Connor Wong had a great spring training and beat him out in camp. And so now now Connor Wong's mm-hmm. uh, been on the Red Sox. But that's another guy who who fans really got to see along a, a lot true. of last year in Worcester. Yeah. and uh, and we'll probably well. see Alfaro in Boston before the year is over. The way we go through catchers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you never know. We'll, we'll see. Yeah. Any other players? Of, any other pitching prospects? Any hmm. any pitching prospects? Yeah. But, you know, I, I'd say our 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 pitchers. That's been another area where we've we've seen um, so much movement over the years. I think a, a real success story last year uh, was John Schreiber, a guy oh, sure. who who was was with us uh, for a majority of the year, and then went up to Boston and just turned out to be one of their best best arms in the mm-hmm. in the bullpen. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we'll see who who uh, who as we get further along into the season, who turns out to be uh, you know some of the, the mm-hmm. top guys to keep an eye on. Mm-hmm. But um, Mata, who you just mentioned, was certainly one mm-hmm. of them, and Schreiber was a great success yeah. story last uh-huh. year. Um, well, just thinking about we did we kind of went through the bit about the promotions kind of quickly. You 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 brought in here a couple of these uh, these bobbleheads. Uh, Include, here's here's one with uh, with, with uh, Jaron Duran on it. Let me get that in the cam picture there. And uh, I, I'm backwards with all this stuff. And this is a real fan favorite of Framingham. Uh, this one here, uh, Rich Gedman. I know his uh, his boys played on the Framingham high school teams for a couple of years. And uh, Rich was, a, by the way, I mentioned senior softball before. Rich was our speaker at our annual banquet this year. And oh my God, was he fun! I had the chance to interview him. And, I, I think I only had to ask him one question. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, uh, R- Rich is the best, and uh, we have so many Framingham ties uh, in our organization there. Uh, our hitting coach, Getty as we call him, uh, is a Framingham resident. Our general manager, Dan Ray, is a Framingham resident. Right. Uh, the Red Sox farm director, Brian Abraham, who oversees all of the you know constant roster movement and and uh, oversees the Red Sox farm. He's a Framingham resident. So 
Uh, there's you, lots of fun times. Your ticket, your person charge of ticketing, I think is from Framingham. Our, uh, Tremblay. Uh, uh, George, Tremblay, yes. George Tremblay. Yes, George yes. Tremblay uh, is also a friend. I could do a whole that, series so. of shows on this. Um, okay, I, I, th I think you've got my schedule set for the next year. Uh, I don't need to invite you back. I can exactly. <laughs> you've, got plenty of, you've got plenty of friends yeah. to have uh, folks to, to pick yeah. from. So. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, those are some fun connections, Dave. So uh, well, what other kind of promotions are happening that can we look forward to this year? Do, 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 you, do, you, do you actually have a bobblehead night? Where you uh, give up? You know, we're we're actually we're cutting down uh, on the number of bobblehead nights that that uh, that we had in 2022, and we're we're having more <clears throat> alumni, and we're using these Throwback Thursdays as opportunities to bring guys back, like Lou Merloni. We had Orlando Cabrera come out last week. We're mm -hmm. having Jim Rice, Wade Boggs, um, you know, some some Hall of Famers. Uh, we're using Thursdays as our our nights to uh -huh. to. Uh, Bring some some former Red Sox players back, uh, which I think is really going to be be fun for the fans. On on Tuesday nights, we're doing uh, taco and tequila Tuesday nights, okay. where you can get a margarita and a few tacos for twelve bucks. It's a it's a great deal. Uh, on Wednesdays, we're letting fans uh, bring their dogs to the game. We're mm -hmm. calling them Woof Woof Wednesdays. So those are just some new sort of fun. Promotions that we're bringing back. And, uh, Charlie, are you taking yeah, notes on these? Uh, I'm listening. As things that I haven't heard any promotions for Thursday night, though. Uh, well, Thursday night? Yeah. Well, th well Thursday oh, nights Framingham are our, night. our throwback Thursdays. So. Oh, that's it. Okay. No, no <laughs> special foods or anything? No, not for a Framingham night. Are you going to have, have uh, Jack's Abbey beer, maybe? Or, oh, that would be nice. You know? <laughs> there, there's going to be plenty of plenty of great food on, on Framingham night. Yeah. There. You won't have to worry Good. about that. Looking forward to yeah. it. Yeah, well, I think the city ought to begin to get some of these things going at City Hall and have a bobblehead day maybe one day at City Hall. And uh, no, have a bobblehead of the mayor. Have no, a bobblehead. That'll, that'll go over that'll big. Go over big. <laughs> That's your new election campaign, re-election yes. campaign. <laughs> um, well, Worcester has kind of an interesting baseball history, and I, as somewhat of a historian of the game of myself, I'm always fascinated by that. And We have probably the most famous connection of this area to history is, is the Casey at the Bat story, which I think somehow or other comes out of either Hollis. The, the guy who wrote it, I believe, was from Worcester, right? Yeah. Uh, yep. And so there, the, and, and about the Mudville Nine, and I, and, I, and, and, and the, this brings home one, one of my fun things that I've seen, and, I, and this is up, in, up behind home plate. You, you have this lovely refreshment area, which is so, sort of a corporate boxy sort of a food area during the season, but I, I understand you, you have a lot of events there in the off season. And, yeah. Yeah, uh, our our DCU club, Dave, is what we call that area. And you bet when when the Woosocks are on the road, uh, we use that that space to make sure that Polar Park um, is is operating year round. We we want it to be a ballpark uh, that has plenty of year round uses, year round events, and and that space you just mentioned is is certainly a a, a place where we bring bring a lot of people together. And mm -hmm. so um, you know you saw us have a, a football game uh, in the fall. Uh, Mayor, maybe we'll find a way to get some uh, get get some Framingham uh, football players out. Sure. Uh, well, maybe in, Framingham in State could play a game out there sometime. And, uh, yeah, but they, they could play Worcester because Worcester Worcester State, I believe, is in there. Is in the MassCat conference with them. That's too good of an idea not to do. Yeah, yeah. We'll see what other good ideas we yeah, come okay. up with on this show. But yeah, but it's a uh, dangerous place to come. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> we'll see what we can do. Um, well, we were talking about the history. Didn't Ted Williams hit a, hit a home run in Worcester once? I, I have a. Yes. I, I went there. I went to some event somewhere, and they and I got a bobblehead on my on my screen in the back here that I use. You, you can't see it too well, but this is my collection of bobbleheads at at home on in my in my shrine in my basement. So. Yes. Uh, yes. That that home run you just mentioned. Yeah. Uh, came in 1939 during an exhibition game uh, at Holy Cross, and that was mm -hmm. the first home run that Ted Williams ever hit in a Red Sox uniform. So uh -huh. all sorts uh -huh. of great um, baseball history in Worcester. Worcester used to have a major league team. Not too many people knew about that. They had a team called the Worcester Worcesters that played in the National League mm -hmm. in the 1880s. Uh, but the city hasn't had professional baseball since the 1920s. And uh, so that's why we're, we're so excited to, to bring it back. You know, they've only had independent clubs mm -hmm. uh, in, in Worcester. And so um, we're the first pro team that's been in the city since mm -hmm. the 1920s, which is hard to believe. So we only got a couple of minutes left. Uh, let's just have a quick discussion about some of the logistics. If I want to buy a ticket, I suppose there's a woosocks.com or is it something, like a, a website that I can go buy tickets at? 
Absolutely. You go right to woosocks.com. I got we it encourage, right. encourage all fans to come to Framingham night next week. We can't wait. Uh, right in our landing page there, you'll you'll see that link, and uh, proceeds are going to benefit the the uh, the Metro West YMCA, mm-hmm. a portion of those proceeds. So, And, and if I want to park, do I have to park in uh, Shrewsbury somewhere? Go to, <laughs> Dave, go to, go to woosocks.com slash parking. We have a whole section for you. You can pre-reserve some spots. You can look at all of our surrounding lots and we'll make sure we have a good spot for you. Okay. And, uh, and, and the train, the, 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 the train from Framingham would take me to Worcester, I think, it would, the, the, the Amtrak train or the commuter rail. Right at Union Station. Get off. It's, it's less than a 10-minute walk. I've done it. Um, and it's, it's uh, incredibly convenient. It's something that we didn't have when, when we were in Pawtucket. If you wanted to train it to Providence, that was a, that was a 15-minute mm-hmm. drive from the ballpark. Yeah, Here we have the luxury. It's, it's a very close walk. walk. Okay. Yeah. 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 It's great. Well, I, both of you, is there, I, I got a minute left. Is there something I should have asked you that I didn't so far? Uh, I don't think you asked the mayor how his arm's feeling for yeah, next he's, week. He's starting out the first pitch. I haven't even done any practicing yet because my arm is a little sore, but we'll get there. I, I we'll understand there. from our pregame chat here that, that, that you're going to have to throw out a pitch at the Little League opener, too. So. Yeah, we're going to try to do that, too. So, so, so this will be a warm-up for the you, Little you League can for tell, me. You, you can tell the kids who use yeah. Worcester as the minor league there team, for, just like the, they do for the Red Sox, right? Well, it's been great having both you guys on. Uh, Joe, it's always great to have you uh come back and talk about Worcester. People might may wonder why I do the Woo Sox on my Framingham TV station here, but I think you guys are are the closest thing to a team, the professional team that we have here. And uh, and I and I you know and I'm I'm thrilled that you're doing for the second year in a row now. Thank you, Charlie. That's the great. the Worcester uh, the the Framingham night there, and I hope anything you can do to build the connection between Framingham and Worcester. We're right down your pike here, and you and uh, that that is just wonderful. And Mayor, thank you so much for. My for, pleasure. For Thank coming you, on and uh, Good bringing you some uh, you. some local legitimacy to, to, to my show. I can say I, I've had the mayor. So congratulations. <laughs> and all you fans out there in TV land, come back and watch us. The TV station shows us a lot. We're on uh, right, right now. We're on Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays and Fridays at 830 at night, as well as Saturday morning at 730. And uh, and watch AFTV. It's 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 Framingham's best. A big thanks to my, my, our our TV crew that, that's helped us put this together today, and uh, and in this lovely TV studio at Framingham Access Framingham TV. Uh, good night, and come back and get out and see the Woosocks. <laughs>